hello what and I've just realised I forgot to move my mic down because I'm a moron move that over there can everybody hear me okay right so uh, purple rock last thank you for the follow <clears throat> conch man rocky horror what a movie to show the night I was oh I thoroughly enjoyed that Brilliant. No, I normally move my mic about and I completely forgot about it because, well, I was too busy watching Rocky Horror. <laughs> right, so, before we begin, begin tonight's story, I must remind everybody that it is, like every other story, it is strictly for mature audiences. Not suitable for anyone under the age of 18 or anyone with a nervous disposition. Now, this story isn't like my other's. It isn't as gory, it's not as graphic, but there is moderate graphic content, so same rules apply. Sorry. If you're new at the channel, welcome. If you like what you see, why not support me? Drop me a follow. Ah, we're fine then, conch. Just, just a wee bit over 18. <laughs> My apologies for the next bit, but... If you missed any of the previous channels, jump over to my YouTube channel. You will find them all there. If you're watching this on YouTube and you aren't already, then please hit that sub button and ring the notification bell so you always know when I upload new stories. They usually go live on a Tuesday afternoon. That allows for the 24-hour Twitch rule. As always, please leave a like or a comment in my videos, tell me what you think, and share them with your friends. And another news, how not to keep a cigarette lit. There's something new for me. But one of the that's not new to these stories knows it normally takes me half an hour to finish one cigarette because I can't keep it lit. Right, so... Normally with my stories, there's a process that I go through. I start off with some basic information, names, dates, places. I take it for there. I mean, that's the 21st century. We're all walking about with personal computers in my pockets. So, filling in the blanks is... Wraith! Hello, Wraith. Don't oops me. So, filling in the blanks is normally pretty easy. When, when especially when there's been a crime committed, because you think about it, there's always news articles to go on. Doesn't matter when the crime took place, the internet is an amazing thing. And then there's good old fashioned murderpedia, which is absolutely brilliant. It's pretty much a wiki full of who done it and they've even got them alphabetized and categorized male female country you name it motherpedia rocks okay now once i've got all the information i need to then take a couple of days to write up a script i get it printed off and i'm good to go live on a sunday night this story was different because all i had to go on was a name a job title, a country, and I knew pretty much what half or what century he lived in. But other than that, I really didn't have a clue. Now, the subject for tonight's story, I hadn't committed any crimes, and I certainly, I didn't know of any that he'd committed, and I certainly didn't find any when I was digging. So, Murderpedia's out the window. And news articles really only mention him when he was an expert witness. Again, not really a lot to go on. But I was determined to find out as much as I could about this man. One day. One day. But I've never been one to gear up, so I kept looking. And finally found the man I was looking for. In a matter of speaking. 
but I got all the information that I needed to write my script. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Oh, look, clipboard. No more fl flapping papers. This is great. I'm really going up in the world. I got a clipboard. I don't know how much it cost though. I gave the boy three pound to pick me up and it the work, so I don't know. Right. So, boys and girls, I need you to cast your minds back, right back to the very beginning, before story time with Buck Buck when it was Scotland the Graves. Three stories in particular. The story of little Helen Priestley. You cunt juggling thunder cunt! Hey kiddo, best insult ever. No name the the voice in the movie, and then I'll be impressed. Also, hey sis. <laughs> so, the story of little Helen Priestley, brutally killed at just eight years old in Aberdeen. Then we've got the story of Jesse King, the baby farm killer, and the story of Susan Newell, the go kart killer, and the last woman executed in Scotland. If you can recall these stories, all told on different nights, but they had a few things in common. The firstly, all three killers were women. No! Ryan Reynolds from Blade Trinity. There we go again. It's when the silver's getting pumped through the vents. But not only were all three killers women, but groundbreaking forensic science was used in new ways to find the killers and to prove beyond all doubt that they were guilty. And one man was responsible for it all. Shit. <laughs> It was actually Wraith that made that sound alert. He made a few of mine, actually. I'm, of course, talking about the extraordinary Dr. John Glaster. Now, we know that the good doctor was a remarkable man. There's no doubt about it. But during my research, I discovered that he lived for 115 years. Hmm. No, that's not a buckmuck misprint. I know I make mistakes and I type things wrong and I miss... That is not a misprint. Yeah. Now, I know we've heard some amazing, unbelievably true things here on Storytime with Buck Buck, but that's not one of the things. So, not believing that it was possible, I kept digging. And it turns out that there was not just one Dr. John Glaster, but two Dr. John Glasters. A father and son duo who lived almost identical lives. Now, how's that for a plot twist? <laughs> so, we have two doctors. Matching names, matching careers. But both made medical breakthroughs in forensic science. So, to make things easier, we're just going to call them senior and junior. Just so we don't get them confused. Because, yeah, there was two of them. Attempt number four. Not that and done, but I think to make life easier for them back then, because obviously they did have the same careers, um, Junior was known as Young John. So. And Senior was just known as John. But. I didn't find that until it was a bit late. So we'll just stick with the senior and junior route. Right. Yeah. So senior was born in Lanark on March 9th, 
1856. To Joseph Glacier and Marion Hamilton Weir. He attended Lanark Grammar School and in 1873 enrolled in the Faculty of Medicine at Glasgow University, where he obviously graduated. After graduation, he became a police surgeon and a GP in town head. But in 1881, he was appointed Professor of Forensic Medicine and Public Health, a position he held until 1931, a year before his death, when he was succeeded by his son, Dr John Glacier Jr. And that's where the confusion came, because both in all three stories, the only other mentioned Dr. John Glacier, Professor of Forensic Medicine in Public Health at Glasgow University. They never differentiated which was which. Hence, when I got a date of birth and a date of death, I'm thinking, this dude did not live for 115 years. Back then, if you made it to 60, you were doing good. Nowadays, even still, 115 is pushing it. So, yeah. But, in 1998, sorry, in 1898, he was elected a Fellow at the Royal Society of Edinburgh. At the time, he was still a practising GP, as well as doing everything else, because, let's face it, our boy John Senior, he was a pretty busy guy. Now, how we ever fun time to marry Mary Scott Clark on 8th of May, 1878, and have six children, Mary, Jeannie, Isabella, Marion, Joseph and John. It's beyond me, but he managed it. Now, all the kids are all named after each other and everybody's named after one another and it gets hella confusing. There are so many Marys and Marions and Johns and Josephs, it's ridiculous. Ah, I did not know that. Oh. Well, there's an interesting part. So, I knew that old John Boy here, he did not live to be 115. That just, I mean, we've came across some weird and wonderful things here, including yellow monkeys, or rather the ghosts of yellow monkeys, but no, not a chance for door boy. He was a, a medical marvel. I mean, the guy was a genius, but he did not perfect longevity there early stages in his career. Not a chance. So, in 1902, he published a textbook of medical jurisprudence. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. We're all friends here. We all know I've got a speech impediment. And when it comes to saying weird words, I suck. Okay, weird words, weird names, I don't do good at. But jurisprudence, toxicology and public health. And apparently that was his most famous work. He was also noted as an expert witness in the widely publicised and widely publicised cases such as the trial of Oscar Slater in 1909. Which, FYI, whole other shit show of a mess. Right. I will be covering it in a few weeks time because that shit, that needs told. But he was an expert witness in that case. Among many others as we've discovered along the the weeks here. Now, that, my friends, is where the story of jo Dr John Glacier Sr. ends. He and his wife passed away within hours of one another after 55 years of marriage. 
after being ill for several days with influenza at their home in 3 Newton Place, Glasgow. On December 17th or 19th, 1932. I can't get the exact day because some some sources are saying the 17th, a couple others are saying the 19th, so it was one of the two. But it was mid-December and all that. But, of course, it's not the end of the story because there was another Dr John Glacier about to step out of his father's rather large shadow and come into his own in the forensics field. Now, before we talk about Junior, it's worth noting that one of the couple's daughters, Marion, also married a doctor. Dr John, yeah, there we go again, Borland McVale, son of a family friend. And another doctor. Lots of doctors. Another interesting fact that I came across. One of the children doesn't say which one. But my best guess, using what information that I could find, would be Joseph. Now, like I said, that is purely my guesswork. Um, but... It, one of their children would become a naval surgeon and go on to be the parent of Gerard Glaster, the famous TV producer. And when I say famous, I don't mean famous. I mean, this guy worked on some really big TV shows, like, the expert called it Howard's Way. And his biggest, biggest success was a drama about a road haulage company called The Brothers, which aired in the 1970s. Now, all we know for sure that his surname was Glaister. His full name at birth, John, yep, there we go again, Leslie Gerard Glaister. And that his father was a surgeon in the Royal Navy. And that he is nephew to John Glacier Jr. and grandson to John Glacier Sr. Which is why I believe that his father was indeed Joseph. Because otherwise his surname would have been different. It would not have been Glacier. Had it been one of the daughters, his surname would have been different. But it was. It, it wasn't. He ultimately passed away in 2005 after a rather illustrious career and with the BBC and other networks but the BBC were his main main contractors but he was pretty big heavy hatter in British TV production for what I can make out so yeah rather illustrious family <laughs> and I can't I've checked See, I can't remember watching Howard's Way, but I do rem I do know it, if that makes sense. And it was like, well, I never expected him to tie into my story. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's weird how that all ties in, but I cannot find any information I'm pretty sure my mum did as well. Hmm. But it's something that we all, we've all, everybody in Britain's heard of the show. And the fact that the producer ended up being tied in with one of my stories, that was wrong. But I can't find, I can find out his early life, his education, married three times, he's had kids, he passed away in 2005. But there's no information on his actual parents which was weird, but obviously with the surname not changing, I'm assuming, I'm, my best guess is it would be Joseph. Conch, thank you so much for the sub. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Sorry, I sprayed so much hairspray 
before coming on that There we go. An awful dry mouth. Mm. So, oh, I always end up with a mouth fire hairspray. On a Dr. Glacier Jr. And he was born 31st of May. Sorry, born. Keep forgetting what everybody's Scottish. Whoops. 31st May, 1892 in Glasgow. He attended Glasgow High, then, like his father, went to Glasgow University to study medicine, graduating in 1925. But even before he graduated, he was attached, obviously, the timelines we went to war while he was at university. Now, he was attached to the First Line Military Hospital in Springburn, where under Professor Kennedy he held administrative and medical charge for 70 beds. Remember, this guy's not qualified yet. He's not graduated. And he's in charge of 70 beds. In the army, he qualified as an instructor, instructor in anti-gas training, teaching and administrating on courses and at Ripon and Aldershot, where several thousand men underwent training. Glacier Jr. saw active service in field hospitals and clearing stations in France and Palestine and was in charge of the medical division comprising about 600 beds at the Egyptian Stationary Hospital, Lud, Palestine, before he graduated. Obviously, 1918, the war ends, and he goes back and finishes medical school. But, yeah. Now, in returning to England, he became officer in charge of the outpatient department of York Garrison Hospital, working as officer in charge of demobilisation of the HAMC units for the Northern Command. In August 1919, he was demobilised and he finished the war as a captain. He hadn't graduated and he finished as a captain that's insane that tells you just how good this guy was now after graduating he went to work alongside his father with the Glasgow Police up until 1928 when he travelled to back to Egypt to become the Professor of Forensic Medicine at the University of Cairo replacing Professor Sidney Smith. He'd only been graduated for three years and he became a professor. This guy was insanely good at what he was doing. In 1931, he took over from his father at Glasgow University as Professor of Forensic Medicine. And it was at this time he began his study into hair and made the advances that were able to secure a conviction in the Helen Priestley glad you're enjoying it conch now it was because of this that he was able to secure a conviction in the helen priestley case in 1934 pro proving beyond doubt that it was Jeannie donald's hair in the blue hessian flower sack that the young girl's body was found in and that on the body of little helen herself because if you remember 
they was able to match beyond all doubt the hair in the bag and on the little girl to the hairbrush that belonged purely to Jeannie Donald. Senior, not junior, who was oh, the one that landed her mum in trouble in the first place. But, yeah. In 1934, he was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, just like his father before him. Right, tangent time. Because that's something you hear from me, right? But no, I was curious about this Royal Society of Edinburgh thing, because that's twice it's been mentioned now. And you know what I'm like, if I find some, I'll, I'll just keep digging to a thin out. To get to the bottom of it. And I'll be honest, I was expecting a bunch of snooty old men sitting about, lots of money in their pockets, smoking pipes, drinking brandy, and giving away about the good times. I was wrong. Cancel. What the name of it? Where's the button? Where's your button? Be quiet, if they asked you. So, yeah, I was wrong. I mean, it might have started off that way, don't get me wrong, it quite possibly did. But, they're very different to what I expected. They are most definitely a very elite club, but... No, what I was expecting. The Royal Society of Edinburgh, or the RSE... Scotland's National Academy was established in 1783 for the advancement of learning and useful knowledge. Their contemporary mission remains the same, the deployment of knowledge for public good. With 1,800 members today, you need to be invited to apply and have several members speak on your behalf. So, if you don't know someone in there, you ain't ever getting in. It's still that exclusive. Once you apply, the RSE Council meet to consider your application. Now, today's council is actually pretty impressive. Most of whom are professors or doctors. Several of them have OBEs as well. It's a basic council structure with a president, five vice presidents, nine other council members, five office bearers. So it's not a one man rules the roost type thing. And it's certainly not the boys club that I pictured it to be. Because it's a pretty 50-50 split male-female in the council. It's a male president, but the couple of females are vice presidents and the treasurer, I believe, is female as well. So it's pretty evenly split. It's not the boys' club I imagined it was. Right, tangent over. I just, because it's been mentioned twice, wanted to save coming back to it in a couple of weeks like I ended up having to do with Dr. Lacia. Let's go back to the main event. Alright. 1935. Junior worked on the Buck Ruxton murder case. Where he successfully solved a 70 piece human jigsaw puzzle. And identified two separate female victims. 70 body pieces and he was able to make two people out of them in 1935 this guy's brilliant okay i mean there's no no two ways about it his dad was good this guy the father of modern forensics right here and i thought it was one guy well dad hmm I'm not going to get into any more details about that particular jigsaw puzzle. 
because I want to cover that at a later date as well because that is some geez, some messed up shit right there but I mean that and the Oscar Slater stories they are they are a whole load of messed up but Dr. Glaister Jr.'s work was so brilliant that Perry Mason author Eri Stanley Gardiner dedicated the book The Case of the Horrified Heirs to him and his nephew Gerard Glaister based the 1968 show The Expert which ran for eight years on his work. Now, for what I can make out, um, can anybody remember Quincy M.E.? The expert seems to be something really similar to that, where Quincy, the medical examiner, would go on and he would solve, piece the puzzles together, piece the puzzle together to solve the crime, it seems like the expert is. Oh, I loved Quincy. I need to see if I can find that name. And I love this new highlight. My face looks so fucking shiny. I just wish I could do some of the bags under my eyes. But the expert. Yep. The expert seems to have been like an earlier version of that for what I can make out. And it was based on. Dr. Glacier, well, senior and junior for what I can make it, but it was based on their works. <laughs> Thanks, Purple. No, I've, I've not been sleeping good lately and I've got bad bags under my eyes and I've got so much makeup on you, you'd think it would cover it, but it really doesn't. And I'm past caring, to be honest with you. I'm near 40. If I've got bags under my eyes, then if that's the worst thing that's happening to me, I'm doing okay. But, like his father before him, Junior was quite the busy man. Don't you tell me to shut up. I'll kick you up and do the turn when I'm up there, when I'm done there, over there. Next Friday. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Now, but, yeah, like his dad before him, Junior was quite the busy boy. So, it's hard to believe that, like, his daddy managed to find time for any kind of personal life. But, he managed it. In 1918, he married Isabel Rachel Lindsay, daughter of Sir John Lindsay, former town clerk, clerk of Glasgow. Oh, I might not be there, but that's still my turn. The couple would go on to have two daughters. He officially retired, officially retired in 1962. But he didn't shy away from the public eye. Mm -mm. No, he, he wasn't a wallflower this this doctor. Mm -mm. He often told tales of the cases that he and his father had worked on and worked closely with, his, with the script writers for his nephew's show, The Expert, which, as we know, was based on him and his dad's work. He wrote for Popular Press and even published an autobiography, which I am going to find and read. I wonder if I can get it on my Kindle. Hmm. I'll have a look. He also attempted a novel. Ellie Jack. How's you? Look, hydrating. Don't listen to what Junge says. I'm hydrating. See? See? Is that? Don't come and do my dishes, please. See? I'm doing it. Please don't come wash my windows. <laughs> I, uh, I think me and um, Junior are going to head up uh, 6th of December that show, isn't it? I 
think it's the six. Yeah, I thought that. I'm just, I think I'm going to grab the tickets next week or something when I get paid. Um, oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure they hydrate. <laughs> I'll make sure they hydrate because the last thing I want is you coming and vacuum. Wait, we don't have carpet. We got hardwood. <laughs> I love that sound all there. I'm sorry, just dancing away to my sound all else. Oh. No, but I promise, legit, we are hydrating. How are you doing, anyway, buddy? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. How are you keeping, anyway, legit? So, he attempted a novel as well. The cats are doing fine. I think they're actually up with Ginch the now. Ginch is in chat. Tell them yourself. <laughs> but the, the, the novel didn't really pan out for him. Because I can't even find anything on it. So. He passed away on the 3rd of October 1971. And was buried in his wife's family grave. Now remember... He's in chat. Ask him. <laughs> and his wife's family were quite prominent in Glasgow, so they're buried. Uh, him and his wife are buried at the family grave at the top section of the Glasgow necropolis. Now, to clarify, three cases that we've covered so far, there's certainly more to come, that mentioned Dr. John Glacier. Only the case of Helen Priestley was solved with the help of Junior. The other two cases were in fact, for what I can make out based on the years it was junior so the jesse king the last woman to be executed in edinburgh the baby farmer killer and susan yule the last woman to be executed in scotland who was the go-kart killer who killed the little paper boy um that was senior that was involved in those cases and junior was the aberdeen case where she got 10 years in jail and then sorry, sorry your husband's dying on you go, go look after him still annoyed at that hmm. now that concludes tonight's story and honestly I was expecting a nice simple tale about one man who helped pave the way for modern day forensics but it's never simple here on story time with Buck Buck, has it, people? Well, turned out there was two men involved. An amazing father and son team who paved the way for modern for for uh, for forensic science. Well, for the forensic science that we have today. And senior even had an award named after him. The John Glacier Prize was founded in 1958 by Mrs. Jean Glacier Martin. So that would be his daughter, Jeannie. In memory of her father, it is awarded annually on the recommendation of the Professor of Forensic Medicine, a position that both men held, to the best student of the year in the subject of medical Jurisprudence. Jurisprudence. I don't. I don't know how to pronounce that word. I really. I don't have a Scooby Doo how to pronounce that word. But it's all good. 
It's like J U R I S P Prudence. Jurisprudence. That's exactly how it looks, so I don't know. Seriously, these men were brilliant. And I can't really find out any information about Senior's parents, Joseph and Marion. They seem to have came out and over. And it became a very prominent family in Scotland's recent history. Before that, I can't really find anything. But if it wasn't for the recurring name, I wouldn't even have kept that they existed. Like, because the same medical expert name came up, that's what got yours and me curious. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have known that either of them existed, let alone that there was two of them. Now, I very much doubt that... No, you're fine, Kerr, you're fine. Thanks for dropping in. I very much doubt that Senior ever imagined the legacy that he started when he chose his career as a doctor all those years ago. And although not all of the family became doctors, most of the men did. And most of the women went on to marry doctors and they continue to name their children after each other and it gets confusing because there's so many, like I said, there's so many Johns and Josephs and Marys and Marians. It gets confusing. and But the story was being told by Senior's grandson over a century later on the BBC and when I never knew I'd never heard of these guys this family it's insane the name John Glacier might, might not have meant anything to us before we noticed it in these stories <laughs> he has not he's keeping the big cats happy and keeping them quiet. But. Uh, as the name is known throughout the medical world. And it's a name that forever shaped the way we look at forensic science. And. Uh, it's like I said. Clipboard's done now. <laughs> like I said. Um. We, I'd never heard of them before. I'd never heard the name. It was not a name I was familiar with. And then it kept popping up and popping up. And po Sorry, I'm rolling a cigarette. It kept popping up in every story for three weeks straight. John Glacier, John Glacier, John Glacier. And it was like, right, this guy seems to know his shit. Let's have a wee dig, see what we can find out about him. And it turned out, not only did he know his shit, his son did as well. And then his grandson would become this famous TV producer. And we had We had his other son, who I, I strongly believe became a Na Royal Naval Surgeon. And the, the, the daughters went on to marry doctors. And <coughs> doesn't work in a Sunday stream, Wraith. I'm looking right at my monitor. Tuesday, Thursday, I'm looking at this screen. Sunday, I'm on this screen. <laughs> and I love that, wow. I love that sound earlier. I need to get that clip shared, man. I've, I've got it on my computer. In fact, I think I've got it on my phone as well. Um. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> very disappointed with the latest episode. Very, very disappointed. And I think if she'd said Geronimo one more time, I was going to switch off and protest. Oh! Behave, children. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. No, seriously, that new episode was not not good. No, no, no. Although, nice as we ever to let somebody do. But, yeah, back, back to what I was saying. So, this entire family, they, they come out of nowhere. They came from no nothing. There's there's no record of them before, um, before senior became as big as he did, and then junior followed in his footsteps. And I've got even more stories to work on now because of that, which is yay, get it, get it for me. I mean, as because. It, Keeps me going with content. So, again, a couple of stories there. Um, but, it, it's, I mean, these guys, they worked in some pretty horrific cases. And, I mean, the case with little Helen Priestley, if you remember, was horrific. What was done to that little girl? And... The Jessie King case where she was getting paid to adopt these babies and she was just holding her man and I don't care that the man got away with it, the man was involved, okay? I don't care what the newspaper articles say, he was involved. And they were just taking these babies and killing them and it was just horrible. So they worked on the worst cases in Scotland. And of course, Susan knew she just. I know this is not a movie this time, legit. Um, I believe next week's stories had a few movies made about them, though. <laughs> but no, this one's no movie. There, there is a TV show. Yep, this is real life. This is all, this all really happened, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah, so it, they did work on some of the most horrible cases and and not just Scottish history, but the Buck Ruxton case that I'm going to cover. It's a few weeks down the line because I have got some that I'm going to cover before that. But, I mean, I believe it was in Yorkshire. So, yeah. They worked in some pretty gnarly cases. And, I mean, yeah, the junior pieced together a 70-piece human jigsaw puzzle to get two women. I mean, holy crap, even a couple of weeks ago when we heard about Jack the Ripper and the Thames Torso Killer and then the Manhattan Ripper or the Times Square Torso Killer as he was also known, even they weren't that brutal. So that's going to be an interesting one to research. But so for the next couple of weeks, uh, I've got my stories all lined up. They're in the good old book and it's been recommendations that I've been taking. Um, still take them, so if you've got stories, yes, because next week's story is one that Minimum recommended and he wanted me to look into Albert Fish. Being a Rob Zombie fan. I am happy to oblige that one. So next week, I'm going to be... Oh, thank you, Care. 
Next week, I'm going to be talking about the infamous, sadistic, son of a bitch that was Albert Fish. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the week after that, I've got a story... Yeah, he was, oh, he was a sadistic sadist. But the problem with Albert Fish is a lot of the information that we've got on him was told by him. So we don't know. There's a lot of sorting out fact for fiction. It's, he's an unusual one. But it's one that, that, I mean, he's mentioned in House of a Thousand Corpses, so he's in the murder ride. So obviously I'm intrigued by that. Because, you know me, I love my Rob Zombie. So after Albert Fish next week, I've got a story that... Yeah. Oh, thanks, Conch. <laughs> so, after that, we've got a story that my mother in law actually recommended. Um, I don't want to get into too many details because it's a more recent story, which isn't something I normally do, but. I looked into it and thought, no, this is horrendous. No, I'm telling this one. <laughs> that's like me, that's why I started this. It started off being a Scottish stories only, but then it kind of grew for there. I still go back and do Scottish stories. Like the one my the one in two weeks that my mother in law told me about is a Scottish story. So I've got that, and then in three weeks' time, I've got a story that Real Care Bear recommended that I look into, and that's that's dark. That's yeah. The Keddie Cabin Models. Yeah. And then obviously I do three darker stories and then like tonight I do a lighter one. So I think for my lighter story I'm going to do the Oscar Slater, the 1909 that we spoke about briefly tonight where the expert witness was John Senior. Now, obviously, if Dr. Glacier's been an expert witness, it means someone died, but it, there is a a lighter side to that, apart from the dead person, obviously. But And then I've got the, the Buck uh, Ruxton models, which are graphic. I mean... The mother and me and human jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so that kind of tells you all about that that we've got coming up. And then again, I'm back to the drum board. So I've got five. I've got the next five worked up. And then I'm back to the drum board. So I'm always looking for ideas. So, if you've got any that you want me to look into, um, hit me up on here, send me a password, you can get me on 
TikTok, you can get me on Hover, you can get me on Twitter, you can get me on Instagram, um, you can get me on Discord, um, can I get a link for the Discord? Um... Thank you. And you can get me on the Ginger Army Discord as well. Where I've got my own section in there. So if you've got any ideas, drop me a, a note in there. Because, like I said, I do want to branch out. You too, kiddo. I started off with us being Scotland the Graves and welcome aboard the Ginger Army. So this started off, as you can see by the book, started off as Scotland the Grave and then gravitated to story time with Buck Buck. And I've got a few I've got a few ghost stories and what and one there that I'm on today as well because obviously they're lighter, they're more humorous and I'm going to do three serious and one not so serious and the stories, the ghost stories, I mean we were talking about yellow monkeys a few weeks ago in a haunted castle near here so they're always good for a giggle and they're, they're still dark to an extent because we're talking about dead people but they can be quite humorous sometimes or at least I find there was a yellow care bear actually I was a big fan of the care bears when I was a little girl and there was a yellow one in fact I'm pretty sure I've got one of them up in the loft hmm. but yeah little yellow monkey that was a cool story Still don't know where that came from. But, so yeah, if you've got any, whether it be ghost stories that you want me to look into, murder cases, the only thing is I won't do open cases. I'll work on, and I'll look into cold cases, I'll look into past cases. <laughs> oh, the Care Bears. Everybody remembers the Care Bears and the little, like, clouds or rainbows and stuff and their bellies and they had a cartoon show. Nope, Irish mother cases are fine as well. The only things that I don't touch, right, just when you're saying about Irish, I will not touch stories about the Irish Troubles. When it comes to the conflict, I won't touch it. Purely because I grew up... I love that one. Dick, dick. But I won't touch stories. There's been a couple of times now I've been looking through and I've found a story that I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. I'll get halfway through my research. And I'll discover that it involves the the troubles in Ireland, the North South Divide, and I won't do it, I won't touch it. Purely because I was brought up in a split family. And I don't want to piss off the wrong people, so I won't I won't touch anything like that. Yeah. Um but anything other else like that, yeah, anything else, yeah, go for it. Like I said, as long as it's not an ongoing investigation. Um, but I'll cover pretty much anything, to be honest, as long as it's dark, you know. Like, I love, I love doing ghost stories, they're funny. Haunted buildings, things like that. Um, I did the a few weeks back. I did the White Chapel docket, 
which was 11 murders in total, including the five confirmed Jack the Ripper, plus one confirmed, um, or one of the five, four, sorry, confirmed Thames Torso Killer. And then that led me on to doing just the Thames Torso Killer on his own, which led to the Manhattan Ripper, also known as the Times Square Torso Killer. So it, stories like that, now, he is still alive, but the case is closed. So I don't mind doing things like that. If I don't mind if the killer's still alive. I don't like that killers are still alive, but I've made my opinions on that very clear, so will not dwell on that because like two weeks ago I did the story um where the when the death penalty gets it wrong so I, we don't really need to dwell on that much more but so I will do anything really dark but not something that like obviously there's a lot of us out here that are doing stories like this and doing things like this I I don't know a lot. Most people do it on YouTube, and I do upload to YouTube. But my my main media is Twitch, because obviously I do the gaming on here and things like that. So my main media is Twitch. So I don't know how many people there are on Twitch doing this kind of thing. But obviously there are a few on there's a lot on YouTube. So. I try to avoid stories that other people have just done. Not a problem. Thank you so much for the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I so enjoyed that. Actually, I was lucky and met some in the cast last October, like a week before the wedding. We went down to Manchester. That was brilliant. Um, so, yeah, but any ideas? Thank you very much, Kia. Any ideas, send them my way. Next week, I do warn you, this man has got 23 pages on Murderpedia. So it is going to be a long story. I'll start at my usual time, 9 o'clock, 9pm UK time. Um, so that'll be 4 for you, Kia. Um, I just... It's a nice enough time because it's dark outside, so it adds to the the air. But I'll be here for nine. Really appreciate that, Conch. Thank you. So I'll start that at nine o'clock, but have some snacks. Or if you've got a sensitive stomach, you might not want to bring snacks, actually, for an Albert fish. But make sure you're hydrated, or else legit will come run and do your dishes. <laughs> But, yeah, so next week's story. Yep. Mr. Modman, if you're anywhere else other than here next Sunday night, there could be a divorce in your future. <laughs> well, I hope you can make it purple. I really do. It's been good seeing you here. So, yep, next week's bring drinks it's going to be a long one but we always knew tonight's story was going to be a bit shorter because it is my puff piece my week off oh me and you're going to fall out and you're going to end up on a very uncomfortable night sleeping in the cage with the dog but we knew tonight was going to be shorter because it was my Puff piece. Three dark, one light. It just, it makes it easier. Because these stories are so dark. And dark doesn't normally bother me, but when you're sitting reading it over and over and over again, you kind of think, really? Can we not get a bit happy? And at least with us, we did. We got a few nice surprises. Yeah, it didn't go the way we were expecting. It was more than one man. But it was nice. It was... Hey, 
If, that, if that's where you're going to be, I'm, I'll, I'll take Pep Pep in the bed with me. God, I said her name. She's moving, I can hear her. But yeah, so, tonight's story was nice. Let's be fair. We've had a couple that have been not too bad. I mean, there was a story about the boy that went back to his old high school pretending to be a kid again so that he could try and become a doctor. And, yeah, that didn't actually end that nice, come to think of it, pair, pair bastard. But, oh, was that dum dum? Hmm. But, yeah, so, just a nice wee story. Couple of twists and turns and didn't go the way we were expecting. And, yeah, there was obviously murder involved because they were forensic scientists. But they didn't kill anyone and no one killed them. So it was nice. A nice wee happy feel good. Everybody lived happy ever after type story. Which is, let's be fair, not something we hear a lot here. Or really anyone nowadays, to be fair. But, I mean, it could have been worse. It could have been a boring story about a man that lived to be 115. At least we got the nice wee surprises. And there was no cannibals, and they never ended up in a doorstep. Hmm. I need to find a good cannibal story. I've not done a good cannibal story in a while. That, right, boys and girls, that's your homework. Find me a cannibal story. I've not done one. Not in a while. Not since the very beginning with the Sonny Bean and the Chris Day the Cleat. We've not had a cannibal story. Maybe I'll find something with Albert Fish. I don't remember... I know that I know his story quite well, and I don't remember any cannibalism, and everybody's doing Jeffrey Dramer, Dramer. So yeah, I need to find a good cannibal story. So find me a good remote, unknown cannibal story. I need I need my cannibal fix, and as long as they didn't end up in my doorstep like the last two lots did, we're good, because the last ones kind of ended up pretty much by you outside. No. No. But, yeah. I mean, all the killers always end up doing this way, and it's so weird. I hate living in a remote part of Scotland with caves and cliffs and... Yeah. But, sorry, I just bit my tongue. Just the thought of all the Sonny Bean on the Beanie Brigade and the caves and uh, uh, just the thought of that again. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to call it a night there. Uh, I will be back next Sunday for the Albert Fish story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the irony of biting myself while talking about cannibals wasn't lost in me. It really wasn't. But yes, I'm going to call up night there. Um, next week, Albert Fish. That's going to be a good one. Um, like I said, this man's got 23 pages in Murderpedia. Most people get one or two at most. Hmm, 23. That's, that's going to be interesting. But... Uh, I'm back on Tuesday with my usual fortnight and then Resident Evil, which I, I did get caught up on, by the way, after my stupid forgetting to save for so long and then dying and losing everything after killing Plant 42. I went back and I got it and I'm back in the mansion. Right, right. I've not went any further, I've just done exactly... And you told me to save it as well. But I've done exactly what I'd done before and I've went as far as the mansion, got in, saved, left it at that. Nothing else. There was a couple of lizard men, but I'm pretty sure we'll see, we're, we're going to meet them again. So, yep. Ginge is back tomorrow. I believe it's fortnight for him. Yep. And obviously, the lovely Miss Care Bear will be back tomorrow for Monday, Murder Monday as well with some DVD for Place Killer. Um, 
yep, Ginger's back in Fortnite. And Wraith will be on back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he ain't on Warzone. I'll play Warzone, but he won't. And Wraith will be on whenever he feels like it because, well, whenever he gets the chance. But I'll leave it there. And yeah, okay, I'll get that in. <laughs> and I will see you all, hopefully, back next Sunday for Albert Fish. Bye-bye now.